So yeah, let's make a start, everyone. Um, fantastic. Thank you all for uh, for attending today. Um, this is the second in our uh, Sutton Hall webinar program, and the one of many that we've uh, we've put out as a Greater Birmingham Chamber uh, since the, uh, the the lockdown. So, our events online rather than in in person uh, hopefully a lot of these have been really um really interesting and, and, and engaging and we very much uh, hope and expect this one to be too um for those of you who don't know i'm the head of the chamber in susan coalfield uh since october 2018 and obviously we uh, we we work closely with a lot of Sutton Coalfield businesses and in this case education establishments to engage with the business community in terms of our uh, uh, our events, uh, events, and, and other uh, PR and newsletters, etc. Um, education really is a key part of of our town in Sutton Coalfield. Uh, there's a real strong sort of ecosystem of schools in the area, and that's really born through the connections the chamber has with various education uh, establishments three of which are here today. So we've got Sutton College where the chamber is based uh, as, a, as, a, as a desk in their, in their offices. Um, we also have Bishop Vesey High School, uh, again, the chamber are members of their corporate partnership. And finally, the Arthur Terry Learning Partnership, which again is a, a very active chamber member through our news and engagement across, uh, across our, our membership. Um, you'll see Katie Hale uh, is on is on is on the uh, on the um, on the webinar as our, our president of Sutton Coalfield uh, joined as the delegate today, and I know she has some quite strong links to various education uh, in the area as well. So a big welcome from Katie, although I don't think she can speak, but she can write in the chat box. Um, <laughs> We've got uh, Jess up all in our events team will be keeping us all in check this lunchtime and is done a, doing a grand job across the whole of the chamber in terms of engaging and making sure these events run smoothly. Um, there will be opportunities for you to engage with our yeah. speakers speak throughout their, uh, throughout their uh, presentations. All I would ask is if you have, have any questions or any answers to some of the questions they are asking, please, uh, please engage through your screen and also put it into the chat box. Following the three speeches, which should last for about 15 to 20 minutes, we will then be uh, engaging in a, in a full discussion with a lot of the questions raised uh, raised about it. So again, a huge welcome. Thank you all. And I'll now pass you on to our first speaker, which is Susie Branch Haddo from um, Birmingham Metropolitan College, which includes Sutton Coalfield College. Susie is the, the Business Development Director, has worked at the college for, for seven years now, uh, always with an employer facing activity. So a really uh, strong experience in that area. Uh, and her team and department is based next to my desk in Sutton Coalfield. Um, her theme will be about ambition over adversity and a call to the business community of how they can support young people and the local economy. So, Susie, a big welcome. Thanks for, uh, for, for attending today. And over to you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just to check, can everybody hear me? Yep, marvellous. Uh, and Jess is my presentation app. Also marvellous. Uh, so hi, yes, good afternoon, everybody. I am Susie, Susie Branch Haddo, Business Development Director at uh, BMET, including the Sutton Coalfield campus. Um, been asked to join today uh, and to spend just five to seven minutes uh, highlighting, first of all, how we as organisations uh, are working to help young people and support young people of Sutton uh, at the moment. Uh, and B, to, to discuss a sort of a, a call out to companies in particular to look at how the local business community can, can help education providers uh, when the time is, is right. Um, before I start, I also caveat that like everybody, I am working from home uh, and I have quite a busy home with a two-year-old son uh, and, and three dogs. So if at any point during my presentation, uh, I get either a little visitor or my homemade security team decide it's time to bark at anybody, I do apologize. Um, so for, for us at, at Sutton College, uh, our approach currently on, on those two things of, of how we can support our young people and also our engagement with the business community is, is around, if, if I steal from, from the Performer 2 pack, it, it is around ambition over adversity. So what we're trying to do through all of our activities is to support and encourage a uh, really diverse student population, as you'll know from, from being a further education uh, college and training specialist, that's from sort of age 16 to, to 60. Um, 
a real diverse student population to, to help them at this time of adversity through really trying to, to continue to drive their determination to help them meet their ambitions. So Jess, if you could take me over to my next slide, please. Thank you. So how are we doing that at the moment? What support are we giving the, the young people of, 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 uh, of Sutton, but particularly those young people that we look after uh, at Sutton Coalfield College? Probably very similar to some of my other colleagues uh, on, on, the, uh, on the webinar today. Um, all teaching is continuing. Um, all teaching is continuing and all teaching is continuing with interactive um, online resources, um, thanks to the experience of our college learning and technologies team. Um, and we're seeing, particularly at our Sutton campus, a really good level of engagement with our students who are being taught remotely by, by their staff and, and, and by their teachers. And in fact, we're seeing some really quite innovative ways that our students, our, our teachers are beginning to engage with, with their students. And just as an example of that, in our music department, we're, we're fortunate to have a, a member of staff who um, works heavily with different artists, um, quite well-known artists across the country. Uh, and he has been uh, calling in on, on sort of some favors from them to ask them to, to support with some of that online and, and remote working. Uh, I know Sue will probably uh, touch on, on this section a little bit further in her presentation, the work that, that she's doing. Um, but as you would imagine as education provider, uh, pastoral services are, are still an absolute priority and, and the main priority for us. So we're continuing to support all of our students with, with a counselling service, with a mentoring service, uh, and of course, all of our duty of care in terms of safeguarding uh, and really having that wraparound care for our students is all still continuing and remaining at a remote distance. Um, financial support from the college to, to our students who need it is, is all still happening and is all direct. So um, meal allowances and um, any vulnerable bursaries that we have to pay uh, and support our students with uh, has all continued and will continue and, and is being paid directly to those young people who, who are in need of that additional support. Um, and recruitment is, is still ongoing. We're, we're very much open for, for business. Um, we've got online open day uh, events happening throughout the, the, the next couple of, of, of months. Um, some of those specific around things like apprenticeships, um, some of those more, more general. Uh, and on top of that, we're able to offer people who have applied to us and, and our applicants, all of the normal support that we would do around interviews and course guidance and advice, everything is, is just being done re remotely. And I suppose finally, in terms of that young per um, that, that provision of supporting young people, We've, we've got plans in place to make sure that in particular for that September start for the, the sort of predominant 16 to 18 year old cohort, that we have got some really strong induction plans to really welcome those students because we appreciate that they will be coming usually from school to college, um, but that this year it's going to be from perhaps more remote learning into college and, and that transition will, will look slightly different. So we're actively working on what those induction campaigns will look like at the moment. On to the next slide, if you wouldn't mind, Jess. Thank you very much. So looking at um, what our partnership with the local business community is, is, is like and what I suppose our a bit of a, a call to arms around that. Um, a, a huge amount of my role and my team's role is to be working in partnership with, with employers uh, and organisations across the West Midlands region, and in particular in Sutton, uh, to, to understand anyway, normally throughout, throughout normal operations, about uh, what the school landscapes look like. So in other words, we work a lot with employers to get an idea of what their skills challenges are, what their recruitment challenges are, what their training challenges are, and we develop programs, apprenticeship programs, etc., to, to try and match that need. And at the same time, we would look at our mainstream programs, so sort of our, our full-time 16 to 18-year-old programs, to check that they've got the right level of content, work experience, delivery to meet the sector's needs. And we're not, when that isn't a match, we try and adapt and change. So I see that that activity is going to be uh, more important than ever. Um, I think in terms of post-CV19, 
we're going to be needing to work even closer with local employers to get a, a real understanding of what what the market now looks like, what the need is of employers in terms of developing young people and how we can adapt our, our programmes and products to, to make that happen. Um, a large percentage, as I said, of, of that work is done through um, supporting the local business community with staff retention and recruitment needs, uh, particularly around developing apprenticeship programmes. And it'd be worth me just, just putting a bit of a test poll out uh, to, to this select audience, really, just to get an idea of what potentially recruitment might look like um, for you as a business in, in the next six to 12 months. So Jess, will we be able to just pop that poll slide up, please? So I think uh, with the poll side, if I could ask you to, so the, my question really is, do you see your business recruiting young talent to apprenticeships or graduate programs in the next six to 12 months? And if you could just pop a, a, an option there on the likely, unlikely and uncertain at the moment. And if you scroll down, it will allow you to, to submit. Um, not 100% certain, Jess, where those results go through, whether they go to, to you or whether they go to me. Um, so I'll wait for you to tell me in the chat box, I think. Okay, so what have we got coming through here? Oh, can't scroll down. Yeah, so that's very much as I'm beginning to 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 um, to, to see from talking to, to customers. That does seem to to reflect. It's the it's the uncertainty I think that we are all dealing with at the moment that does make um, operations slightly challenging. Thank you very much for taking part in that poll, Jess. Could you bring up the the, the slide again, please? Thank you. Um, so I suppose that does just lead me on as I, as I start to sort of wrap up my time um, talking today to, to look at, you know, th those particular asks. And I think where I'm coming from is, you know, there is a huge amount of uncertainty at the moment. Uh, and and the one thing that I think in terms of education and um, uh, and, and the business community that, that we can, however, be certain of is that somehow we must continue the momentum of partnerships that we've all developed in terms of education and business in, in the last six to seven years to, to reform education uh, and to ensure that the business community is able to, to recruit uh, individuals, young people with the right type of, of soft skills. Those I don't call them soft skills anymore, those, those vital skills um, of, of attitude and, and, and knowledge, but also to make sure that education therefore can help uh, develop programs and, and, and train those individuals through through whatever that workshops etc to, to help have those vital skills so we don't want to we, we, we can't I think afford um, however the world comes out to, to 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 let all of that hard work that we've all worked together on over the past six or seven years to, to stop um, and, and we know you know we, we know that pre-7 CV19 that um, there was a major demand and need there. We, we know collectively how important it was to support pe young people with those vital skills. So be that resilience or presentation skills, time management, communication. This was all the type of information that, that we were working together on in, in partnership. And I think, and this is this is my own perception and, and, and in no way Sutton Coldfield's college's um, perception, but my my own view from view is that the need after CV19 or during CV19 is going to be just as, as significant, um, and if not even more significant. Um, we're, we're all working in a time of isolation and and, and a time of uh, virtual working, and I think you know I'll need some support and training and development when I go back into into more of the 4D world. And so therefore, I, my assumption is going to be that our young people are going to need additional support and help to, to really develop those vital skills to start to bring them back into the business community and into the working community when, when the time is right. So I suppose somehow we need to work together. And yeah, I, I'm used to running an SME. That was my background. So I'm really fully aware of the commercial pressures that makes partnership working uh, challenging uh, at this type of time. 
Um, so I think we need to work together to look at innovative ways that we can do this with the end goal of providing the young people of Sutton um, with, with the drive for am ambition over adversity. Um, whether that's that we pull resources, whether that's we look at more online networking together. I, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not really sure what the answer is yet. Um, but what I think is that communication is key. I think through through us all talking, listening to one another uh, and understanding the needs and drivers of education, the needs and drivers of the business community. I think not only will we start to provide some comfort in adversity for us all, including our young people of the of the area, but also I think that communication will help us start to develop some confidence to be ambitious in, in those plans that we can start to roll out no matter what those plans look like. So thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I'm breathing a sigh of relief that there's been no dog or two year old come into the room and I'll hand back over to Chris. Susie, that's fantastic. Thank you very much, yes. And absolutely peerless in your delivery with under, under right. different, different circumstances off camera, I'm sure. Susie, thank you very much. Um, obviously there's some really, really interesting points um, brought there. So if you do have any questions with regards to that, um, if you do have any questions with regard to that, please put them in the question box and then we'll cover them off following the next two um, two presentations. Uh, with that, as I'm under similar pressure with my uh, my young young uh, young cohort in my uh, in my lounge, I'll pass uh, over to Brian as well. Uh, so Brian Davies from uh, from Bishop Veasy again to talk a little more about what uh, what what Veasy's are doing and, and the hard work that they're uh, they're doing as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Chris. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brian Davis, Development Director and Deputy Director of Sport uh, at Bishop Rees's Grammar School. I've uh, been associated with the school uh, pretty much since 1993 as a pupil first and then um, on a voluntary role, um, sort of sports coaching for four or five years and then full time in different roles since 2005. The new uh, area that I've been working on since uh, September 2016 has been around development, which looks at fundraising, alumni relations and events, and then uh, managing our corporate partnerships programme. Uh, I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of what we're doing at school um, and appeal really that if there's any way in which you can support uh, some of our call to arms around PPE, uh, it'd be most appreciated. Next slide, please, Jess. As um, these, yeah, sorry, these are the sort of five areas that I'm gonna cover very quickly. I'm um, looking at how we're supporting students, uh, PPE, some of the alumni matters, corporate partnerships, and then a, a general question around networking and advertising. Next slide, please, Jess. So, um, as Susie mentioned, uh, at, at Bishop Vees is very much um, still um, providing lessons for all of our students, um, continuing with all of the uh, protocol around uh, looking after students and supporting them, safeguarding and support. Um, we have actually stayed open. Um, that is um, been down to the demand of the um, the children of key workers. So at the moment, that's only for two days a week and a slightly reduced hours, so sort of nine till three. Uh, with staff working on a rotor on 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 um, to to support the students on a day to day basis. Um, so all the lessons have been. Uh, are, are being delivered virtually uh, through Microsoft Teams, and they're able to feed back, uh, staff are able to feed back and check on how much work has actually been done. Um, through the communications that we've been doing through newsletters and um, emails and polls, um, we actually adjusted the workload after a couple of weeks. So we've brought forward um, options for your nine students so the, the subjects they were about to drop um in september we've actually brought that forward so they've stopped su studying those subjects um early and um generally you know it is a very tricky time for everyone again as susie mentioned it we're all struggling to deal with it in our own way and to adapt to 
our um, new new life for for however long it 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 takes. So you know, perhaps for students to do five hours of structured lessons a day, you know, it was a little bit too much initially. So uh, we definitely. Um, decrease the amount that we were asking the students to do. Um, next slide, please, Jess. One of the big um, things that if you follow us on social media, you will have seen is we've had a big sort of call up to arms of supporting uh, local health care um, providers, hospitals, hospices and care homes with uh, PPE equipment. Um, so first of all, that was with the mask that you can see on the left side of uh, the slide, where the DT department, uh, two ladies, uh, uh, head of DT Sky Bowen, and the DT technician, Andrew Gregory, uh, been going into school, working with the, the students that we have in school and producing these masks. Um, that have been, say, given out to local hospitals. I know Heartlands have had some, Windley Grange Health um, Nursing Home, and also Good Hope on various wards. Um, we put a call to arms for um, PVC um, sheets, clear PVC, and have had a fantastic response. Uh, we now have lots and lots of PVC and now actually have run out of PP, which is polypropanine sheet. So if there's anyone out there that can help with polypropanine sheets, um, which they provide the small plastic um, bits at the top of the, of the shield and then you know, that would be uh, hugely support, uh, hugely appreciated. We've also had uh, at the top, you can see some wash bags and um, headbands that one of our students has started to produce. Um, again, the the bags uh, are so that once they, uh, uh, NHS workers finish their shift, they're able to put their... Um, their, their clothing straight into the bag and then just put that straight into the wash to not contaminate um, any other clothing. So, you know, we've really worked hard at sort of, you know, through staff initially and then students afterwards coming together and supporting the NHS and those key workers where possible. We've had some fantastic support from six local schools, so Arthur Terry, Plantsbrook, Fairfax, John Wilmot, Streetly, have all, um, and, and Sutton Coldfield College, I believe, have all um, either given us equipment or staff have been working with us. So greatly appreciated it. It's great that all of the schools have come together. I must mention Millennium Point as well. Um, I think are a patron of the chamber, um, but a lot of the machine, a lot of the PPE has been made with the machinery that we got through the Millennium Point grant a couple of years ago. Um, they've just ordered a, a huge roll of PVC for us, and uh, the acting CEO um, was mentioning what we were doing on BBC WM uh, yesterday, I think, as well. So great to get support from the chamber and fellow chamber uh, members. Next slide, please, Jess. Um, a lot of my uh, time is spent on events. So we um, do events for both our alumni and for some of our business partners that I'll talk about um, shortly. Obviously, you know, with the public gatherings limited, uh, we haven't been able to do those events um, as we would normally so we've had to adapt we've um, we're lucky in terms of our alumni that um, work that we've got a specific website where we can um, communicate with uh, I think we've got about 1200 uh, alumni registered to this site and we've been really pushing lots of news stories. Uh, the one on the right, um, and some of you will know, I know Chris uh, has, has spoken and worked with Benedict quite closely, Benedict Newman, um, recent lever who produced a story for us about, you know, what it was like to find out you were leaving school 
in the middle of March and with two days notice. So, you know, um, it has been a very stressful time for the class of 2020. So upper six and the class of 2022 in particular, um, who are doing the GCSE. So, you know, for the business community out there, I think it's important to just remember this time. And, you know, those students' grades might not quite be what they should for whatever reasons. We're still waiting to really find that out. Um, you know, but those students and students in the future, depending on how long this pl all plays out for, you know, just when they're applying for apprenticeships, jobs with some of your companies in the in the future, you know, just remember this time and remember what we've all been through, and then you know, think what it was like for a sixteen and an eighteen year old, and perhaps you know who had prepared for a couple of years to sit an exam in May or June and then haven't been able to do so. So I think we all just need to be mindful of that. Um, we've also been doing some quizzes. Um, so we've got actually got one this evening um, online um, via Zoom and they've been uh, quite popular, but it's been a good opportunity for us to communicate with um, alumni all over the world. Um, and with some of the communications and newsletters that we've been sending out, uh, we've been getting fantastic open and click rates because obviously most people are at home and have access to their computer. So it's a good time to reach out to some of those people that perhaps we haven't had time to do previously. Next slide, please. Corporate partnerships. So um, a lot of you will, will already know what uh, this is. I've seen uh, names watching and um, who, who's an old boy and um, a corporate partner. And obviously the chamber we work very closely with as well. But we work with local businesses to give them exposure to Bishop Beasley's Grammar School and its community. So um, the key benefits, I can see it's a bit blurry, but they're sort of detailing what uh, companies get for being associated with us. Um, and it's not just for the school, but it's the parents, the alumni. It's all of these channels that we have built over the last few years and getting your messages as a business out to them. Um, amazingly, and I'm not sure how, we actually signed a corporate partner in the first week of of um, of, of lockdown. So, um, which, you know, I know it's a very difficult time for businesses out there, but, you know, we've still got computers, we've still got whatever it is, three and a half thousand followers on Twitter, similar numbers on LinkedIn. We can still get your um, and businesses, um, their messages out there to a very, you know, wealthy, um, intelligent community that we, we have. Next slide, please. And with that in mind, um, you know, and this is probably more on the corporate partnership side of things, but it's probably also applicable for some of the businesses, the hospitality, the marketing, probably the chamber itself, is what is going to be the impact as it stands at the moment um, of COVID-19 for company budgets when it comes to networking and advertising. They're often two of the... The, the strands within a business that go first when things are difficult. So if you could answer the question where you see your business, how it will be uh, affected over uh, the next few years, will it have no impact? Will you still uh, commit as much as you have done previously to networking and advertising? Will it affect you for a year, two years, three years, or more than three years? I appreciate we're only a month into lockdown and uh, many businesses sort of having to adapt and uh, you know if it is two months or six months it's going to have a massive uh, differentiation in 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 your response to this question but uh, if you can um, all jot down uh, and make a selection for um, how it will affect your business please Okay, and the results should be coming through shortly. Okay, so let's have a look. 
So that's quite reassuring, I would say, um, in uh, actually um, six of the eight um, people that responded said it would have even no impact or a year impact. Uh, and only three of the eight that have responded felt that the impact would last more than 12 months. Um, you know, it's obviously a difficult time um, for, for all businesses. We're all having to adapt, but I think it's important to keep getting yourselves out there and to, you know, keep networking, whether it be virtually, through events, um, and advertising to key markets um, as much as you can. Thank you and um, for your time, and uh, I'll hand you back to Chris. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. I very much appreciate it. And what a great story around the uh, the PP side of things. It's um, I'd seen the news myself, but to hear that so many schools came together um, and, and that they were made on those Millennium Point machines of the grant that was, you know, in, involved many uh, a good few years back, I think shows, uh, shows how, how possible that is. So fantastic. Thank you very much. So next, uh, next person to speak is Sue Bailey from Arthur Terry Learning Partnership. I myself, much like Sutton and Bishop Vesey, have been uh, been attending and have been involved with Arthur Terry on a number of levels through Anna Newsom, their PR um, PR contact, and also uh, Richard Gill and, and Alex Zarafay as well. And, and it's a really a, a positive business. They were uh, winners of a, a, an award at our Sutton Literal Tamworth Awards quite uh, over the last couple of years. So it's great to have Sue with us. So Sue, I will pass you over and, uh, and look forward to hearing what you've got to say. And then we'll be open for questions for a few minutes. Thank you. So I think you just need to ch turn your mic on, I think. Better? There we go, perfect. I'll start again then. So good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've got no little children here. I've got uh, no dogs, no animals. Um, hopefully I'm on my own, but I can guarantee that my home phone will ring or there will be somebody ringing the doorbell, but here we go. So I'm really proud to work for Arthur Terry Learning Partnership. Um, if you don't know us, we're a multi-academy trust. We've got 14 schools now, um, some in Birmingham, some in Staffordshire and some in Warwickshire. Um, we go from early years, really little ones, to 19-year-olds who then obviously go on to, to other places. In total, probably just over 8,000 children, majority in Birmingham and Sutton Coalfield. Um, a big staff workforce, probably 1,200, 1,300 staff and volunteers. and, and, and Within that team, we've got probably over 50 um, designated safeguarding leads. And my theme today is very much about safeguarding and how we keep our children safe and well during this, um, this very difficult time. Um, my role within ATLP is very much in safeguarding. I'm the lead safeguarding officer. Um, I do lots of training. I train our DSLs. I offer supervision. I offer advice and support. So that's where... Um, my main skills are and where my experience is. So if I go back to the question of how will COVID-19 affect education in Sutton Coalfield, for me, the big statement at the moment is that our schools are out, but education continues. And like our other speakers, I just need to explain how we've been doing this and what we've been doing to keep those children safe. Um, fortunately, our most vulnerable children are still in school. All of our schools are open. Um, the numbers vary. Sometimes we've had across our 14 schools, 150. In fact, even more children in school. Some days it's been down to just 50. That depends very much on our key workers, who's working, who's in shift, who's in isolation. Um, so it is a movable feast, but we've very much made the decision that children are better served in their own primary school or their own secondary school. So at the moment, we haven't moved to hub working or having our schools open for part of the week. Our most vulnerable children are children with child protection plans or our looked after children. Um, these are in school and we can keep an eye on them and we can keep them safe. 
We've also got our key worker children there in school, many teachers who are working in schools. We've got our health workers and other people. Um, and the numbers within our schools and, and the trends in terms of attendance very much mirror um, the national picture. We've then got a group of children that we class as vulnerable, but they're not in school. Perhaps um, they've got underlying health issues or there are health issues within the family that mean they can't be in school. How are we supporting those? We've got a fantastic team of family support workers, student support services across our partnership, and they are in regular contact with those children, as Brian has explained and as Susie has explained. This might be daily phone calls, it might be video calls. Our aim is to maintain contact and give those children um, a voice, someone to talk to who knows them, that they can talk to not only about their education, their schoolwork, but how they're feeling. Um, if essential and necessary, we've done doorstep visits to make sure those children are fine. Um, we've delivered work packs because we know that some of our families haven't got the IT facilities that we're enjoying at the moment and children have to work in, in a far more traditional way. Um, both of the previous presenters have spoken about how we're maintaining education for the rest of our school population and we're doing very, very much the same. So we've got the online learning platform from our own staff and we've got lessons, all of the things that we've talked about already. We've got the work packs for those who can't manage. And then what we've also done, we've signposted our students to lots of other learning platforms. So BBC Bite Size is the obvious one, but also um, Oak National Academy, we've used a lot of their resources as well. Not only have we got, as I said, just over 8,000 children, but we've got a large staff workforce and we're very conscious of our staff welfare. Um, how do we keep our staff safe? How do we look after those as well? We've got a large number of our staff in self-isolation, again, through underlying health issues. So again, it's looking after them and making sure that they are safe and well. And that's about, as Brian has said, about keeping in touch with each other through various forms and just making sure that people um, are well. We're sending out information about mental health, tips for well-being, and to support our, well, our, our staff welfare. Much of this is about linking with other organisations, both in terms of our staff and our students. And I think, as, as both Susie and Brian um, touched on, Partnership working has never, ever been more important to us all. So it's really good that we're maintaining this and keeping those links going. We're working very closely with local food banks, um, local churches. Um, we work particularly well with St. James's Church in Mare Green, who have been fantastic at supplying um, food parcels to, to vulnerable families or families who can't get out. Um, we're supporting um, the mental health of our, of our community by signposting to men mental health sites, safer internet sites and wellbeing sites, as much as we can to keep people as well informed as to how they can stay well. I hope, and I know really, that many of the people listening are parents as well. So um, my poll question really relates to the support you're getting from your school. So Jess, if I could have my question now. So I want you to think about the level of support you're getting from, from your school during this period of lockdown. Um, and let me know if you're satisfied with it, you're, you strongly agree that it's been good, you, you agree, you disagree, or you strongly disagree. If you could answer that now, I'd be very grateful. I sincerely hope that everybody is getting um, a fantastic level of support from their local school. I'll just wait for those results to come through. Okay, so that's interesting. Thank you to those people who voted and I hope that's a fairly positive view. Um, if there are any um, suggestions for what we could do that's better or how we could improve it um, please let me know um, again it, it will be interesting to feed that back certainly to the schools in our partnership and certainly to the schools that we're in regular contact with across our network of schools within Sutton if I go back to Brian's comments about what support we will need in the future 
um, an important consideration for us and something we're thinking about already yeah. is how do we plan for when everything, when children are back in schools and, and, and we're back in our classrooms and we're teaching our children. Um, my worry is, um, is how do we motivate some of those children? You know, children who've worked hard for exams and then been told they're not going to take them. Um, that sends a quite a hard message to them, but how do we motivate them? How do we re-engage them with their learning, with the daily routines of, um, of school life really. So again, I think we'll need help from our business partners, from the Chamber of Commerce, perhaps in terms of career advice, um, opportunities for work experience, um, mentoring, anything that you can give us to help those children get back on, 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 on task will be great. So again, we'll be looking to our, our partners to help us with that. Um, just a couple of points before I finish really. As a safeguarding lead, it's quite interesting to monitor current trends and issues. At the moment, we're having a huge increase in um, incidents of domestic abuse and domestic violence that are, are being reported to us. Obviously, some of our families are under tremendous pressure, both financially and the fact that they are at home, perhaps not in the best of environments. So we have seen that. And the other increase we've seen is in terms of mental health. A lot of our children are, um, are struggling with their mental health. And again, whatever we can do as a network of schools to support them um, will, will, you know, will only help. Um, we are offering um, counselling wherever we can and signposting to other agencies. We work very closely with CAMS, with MIND. But again, it's a real issue for me. Sadly, the other trend that we've we've had to deal with lately is dealing with bereavement. Um, as a partnership, we've had some significant deaths across our, our family of schools. So, so working again with our local partners with St Giles um, with, and other agencies offering support has been really, really important for us. I'm going to finish now, but I'm going to go back to some of the comments that Susie made right at the very start when she talked about um, ambition and adverse adversity. Um, over the last 12 months, we've done a lot of training with our staff on, on ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. Um, sadly, I can see the lockdown um, now being considered as an adverse childhood experience, particularly then when we link it to bereavement. Um, I think our job in school now is to minimise the impact of these ACEs and to ensure our children are safe and well and that wherever possible they reach their full potential um, despite COVID-19. So again, whatever the business community can do to help us in that will be really, really greatly um, received. And that's all I've got to say this morning, this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Perfect. Thanks so much. Brilliant. And if I could bring back in uh, Brian and, and Susie at this point for four questions. Firstly, again, a, a real thanks to, to the three of you to, uh, to, to, to lay, that, lay that down it, it, for everybody. And it's, uh, it's good to see that I think the overarching point is that everyone is working together as best they absolutely can. And I think um, some of those examples, as you've all used, is, 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 is really, really positive. I can see there's a couple of questions. So, um, just go through to the questions area. So, yeah, Robert Elliott, who's our uh, Solihull uh, president, um, and and himself has done a lot of a uh, lot of work around, uh, around school uh, schools and engagement. Um, was asking, is there any risk? Um, businesses visiting schools for careers talks, assembly talk, etc., very very powerful. Is there any risk that regulations might change after COVID nineteen and make this valuable in, valuable interaction difficult? I'll pass that to Brian. Uh, um, what's your thoughts on that? I know we can't make too many uh, sort of ideas for you know into the future too much, but what's your your thoughts on that? Who? Um, to Brian, sorry, to Brian. Sorry, sorry, my doorbell just rang. So <laughs> can you just go and get it? Sorry, get Isla to go and get it. Sorry. <laughs> My six-year-old is now answering the door. So. Um, yeah, hopefully not. Um, I actually think it's an area where we could be better. Um, you know, I know, Chris, you supported our uh, jobs and careers uh, for the last couple of years, and we have sort of 
50 um, local companies come and exhibit. We have uh, about 30 alumni and parents come and speak. Fantastic morning. But actually, you know, we're sort of limiting ourselves to people that can make it to school. Actually, you know, we're all getting more and more um, familiar with using technology such as click meetings, such as Zoom. So why not have someone in another part of the world who's an alumni or a, a, a you know linked to the school that can can yeah. do a webinar on on this or a presentation um from further afield so you know once things are better hopefully a vaccine is found you know and the risk of transmission um is less of an issue then i hope that we will be able to get uh, visitors from um you know the community but then also that um we can think a little bigger and get more people from a wider um distance yeah i think that's a good point and i think uh, we had a, a webinar on friday about home working and, and you know that lack of need to travel or lack of you know lack of, uh, of commute and i know susie goes through that from uh, from time to time with uh, with with her commute. i think it's it's um yeah it's a very good point and a valid one and i think something that that again comes back to that adapting and, and changing how we how we work but i thanks thanks brian that's a good uh, good answer i just wanted to pick up a question for my for myself and um, to to susie on the back of, of her discussion around the understanding of the skills landscape and developing programs to reflect that again i suppose that that may well change by the current situation how do you think we can work together to, to ensure that those changes are uh, are are, are, are better and improved through in the future? Well, I suppose that the challenge we have with, this, with the, the landscape at the moment is we, we we don't know which parts of the economy are going to do well and which parts of the economy are going to, to suffer more than others. So it, we've got to, we're starting to get estimates in terms too, aren't we? We, we know that probably the hospitality and retail and event sectors are, are going to to probably struggle the most um, we can make assumptions that potentially sectors like the construction industry might be a sector that might come out of lockdown potentially earlier um, but these are all crystal ball that i i don't have i'd, I'd be worth a, a lot of money if i did um, but so i think what what we have to do is is it comes back to communication we have to you know, attend as much knowledge as events as we can you know the the event that the chamber held yesterday the the economic breakfast briefing uh was was i think one of the best events i've, I've ever attended let alone attended during lockdown um and it's from sharing that type of intelligence and, and talking about um our own experiences that, that we'll be able to start to get a feel of what sectors are uh, uh, are going to 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 do well what sectors are going to attract uh, and then really as education specialists um our our role is is to is to talk to to, to business community and, and start to to build programs that can meet that demand so it it is going to come down to, to and it's what we've all been doing yeah education in birmingham and and education and um business in birmingham have been working in considerable partnership you can hear that from the other speakers um over particularly the last 6 to 7 years so we've been doing it anyway um, we're just going to, I think, need to take a bit of a pause uh, and start to, to, to work together, the Chamber and, and, and other um, institutions, the IOT, um, the growth company, et cetera, and just start to, to look at what, what's the data telling us, what are experiences telling us. Yeah, thanks, Susan. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. And yeah, again, it's, it's about that, that communication and that, uh, that adapting to what the current situation is. So no, thank you very much. I'm just looking through questions for that of so Robert Kerry from Reach here, Reach PLC Birmingham Live. Obviously, yeah, the president presenters will be sharing their contact details, absolutely. And I think this is great that, that these sort of uh, webinars are creating sort of views and ideas around that, um, certainly. Um, I think for one, one from me to, to Sue, I suppose. Um, Sue, obviously, you come from a safeguarding background. How important is that? That change for the teachers will have it will have been um, from an adult point of view, not only young people but teachers and employees as well. How, how important and how 
how much of a change do you think that will affect the working balance for teachers and for the support? Yeah, I, I think it's been difficult for us all, and it, and it's missing that personal contact, isn't it? You know, and if you've got an underlying safe guarding issue, that makes it even more difficult. Um, children aren't seeing their teachers, teachers aren't seeing their children, um, and, and it almost amplifies all of the underlying problems that might have been there from the start. So it, it's, it's a very different situation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no, that's a, a good point. Though. Good point, So Thank you. Right, so last, yeah, we'll have a last question from Naeem. Um, <laughs> You'll have to go back to school, Naeem. I think that's what happens when a parent doesn't know the homework answers. I've had some awkward moments, but Google has saved me. Is there any support for parents? <laughs> <laughs> Learn quicker, Naeem, I think, in, in that regard. But uh, no, but that is a very fair point. And then that comes back to the adapt, adapting the, the current uh, in the current situation. Um, yeah, Make uh, use of older siblings where possible. I there we go, yeah. Well. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Final, finally, if there is any uh, any other further questions, obviously we're this uh, this is open, you know, as we move forward. So please send that on to us and we can forward that on to any of the any of the team. Um again, a conscious of time. So really appreciate everyone everyone getting getting involved. This will be up on YouTube, so we will be able to rewatch ourselves um on this and more importantly, other people who weren't able to get on the webinar uh, will be able to. I think, for me, the three main um, the three main areas that have come out of this discussion, as Susie said at the start, is that um, is very much around that that ambition over adversity, making sure that we as business as the business community and schools really work hard to support our, our, our student population in whatever way we can, whenever that time is is right. Um, and I think that's a real key key part. And it's great to have seen all of the, the three schools come together and discuss. So thank you very much. Any further feedback, please get in touch. Thanks to all three of our speakers. And uh, we look forward to, again, to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.